Hi, guys. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, today's sermon is called Talk It Out. Let's pray. I'm just coming a little closer. Father, I, I, I bless you and I praise you for what you're about to do and speak today. I pray, Lord, that you will just be glorified. And I pray, pray that you will say something different to us all at the same time. Speak to me and speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. I was watching I was just putting my chair on a different mode. Anyway, I was watching um a podcast called Name Drop Podcast. From what I gather, it's a it's a podcast to see how many names you can drop in in the podcast. Anyway, um, the podcast is hosted by Chris Kirkpatrick um, from InSync and someone from MTV. And their guest was A.J. McLean. A.J. McLean from the Backstreet Boys. And for those of you who don't know, um, Backstreet um, Boys and NSYNC uh, were both uh, boy bands in the mid-90s to early from the early 90s to like about about the early 2000s um they sang they danced and all of that and they were both uh created by the same uh person Lou Pearlman and um I remember being an InSync fan myself, being such a fan of Bye 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 and how they danced and whatever. I was a fan of Backstreet too, but not as much as InSync, and it was this um, kind of of rivalry going on. And in the midst of that, Lou Perlman, the person that was managing them, actually um, made himself a legal member of the band and then started taking a bunch of money and all that stuff. And uh, he, he duped both of them and played both of them off of the both bands off of each other. Backstreet Boys started first um, with with Brian, with uh, AJ McLean, Brian Luttrell, Nick Carter, Kevin Richardson, and ha- and Howie Durrell, and then came in sync with Justin Timberlake. Chris Kirkpatrick, Joey Fatone, um, Lance Bass, and J.C. Chazé. So you have these two, these two competing uh, boy bands, like uh, bands with five members each, and they were Caucasian cute guys that could sing and dance and all that stuff. And what he did 
was basically um, treated them really well. R really well. He had this big house, and it was a playground for, like, guys in their 20s and young teenagers. What he did was uh, treat them real well, like pay for everything and show them a life that they 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 never have seen before. And it was, um, and it was guys who loved music. Some of them were in acting. Some of them were in music before. Some of them were in college. Some of them were not even in the high school. And he just showed them, like, this is the life you could have. And, uh, gave them their first experiences. You know, let them watch watch porn, play video games. You know, like, do the, do the whole uh, guy thing. Like, it was, it was, um, it was a, it was a, um, guy's, uh, guy's dream, and they, they worked really hard, and they each got their breaks, and all that stuff, so, and when they each got their breaks, they would practice for hours a day, and hours a day, but in the midst of that, that practice, he would show them the life and whatever, in the midst of learning choreography, singing, dancing, what, whatever, he would show them the life that they could have. So, um, with all the cars and women and all that stuff, and they worked really hard. So, when they when they each started getting big, um, getting big, they started touring. And when they started touring, um, like people were, um, like getting to know who they were, and you know. This was the dream. It was it was coming true, and then for each of these opposite um, competing bands, like the dream was coming true. And and Chris said in the interview um, when Lou was with In Sync, he would comment about the Backstreet Boys. Uh, negatively, and when he was with Backstreet Boys, he would do the same thing with In Sync. So he he put those these two uh, bands against each other, and come to find out now, in in different ways while he was showing them the life and while they were rehearsing and dancing and doing all this stuff and making him tons of money each, he was actually stealing money from both those bands. And so he was stealing money from both those bands and eventually both fans sued him, uh, got new management, and uh, went on with their lives, you know, sued him, got what they were owed, and um, went on with their lives. Because if you could imagine working hours a day and only getting... Um, nothing, nothing to show for it. Like you're singing, you're dancing, you're you're exerting yourself. You're having a really good time on the road. You're getting women. You're 
you can buy cars and this is what you've dreamed of all your life. Not knowing that that the person that you trust is manipulating you and grooming you for all for all of this. So so in different ways both fans found out that he was uh, manipulating them and stealing money. Uh, money that should have been theirs and whatever. So, but as this was years ago, and if you want to see more about the Lou Perlman story and you're a part of YouTube Premium, there is a great documentary uh, called the Bo- the boy band con, and it tells you the whole story of what Lou Perlman did. And also, if you want to see what I saw, um, there was this name drop uh, uh, podcast. The podcast is called Name Drop, and you look for A.J. McLean Part 1 and 2. They tell the whole story, because Chris Kirkpatrick, who's the, who's one of the hosts of that show, um, was from NSYNC, and um, A.J. McLean, who's from the Backstreet Boys, was a guest. So you get both sides of the story. Uh, and as I was sitting there and watching this, I was, I admired, um, that, that, um, this was over, like, kind of 20 years now, uh, 20 years, and maybe a bit less than that when all this was going down, and these two now 40, 40, 50 year old men were talking about what happened and comparing notes. Now, their stories weren't exactly the same, but it was the same idea of what Lou Perlman did. And the fact that they were able to talk about it, air it out, hear both sides, and I heard heard AJ and Chris say, I didn't know, uh, now that I hear your side of the story, I see fully what he did. And when Chris told his side of the story, there were, there were similarities and both sides didn't know because they didn't talk at the time that they, they, they each didn't know that this man, that this man, that they both trusted, what was um, manipulating them both. And I was thinking, and the conversation was really level-headed, and was really good, and you got to know what instinct went through versus what Backstreet Boys went through. And what the whole, like, what the two bands coming together really felt like. And I thought, and I thought to myself, as I was watching this, I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if people just talked like that to each other, talked like that, and really got each each other side of the story, like, uh, like, when AJ was talking, Chris heard him out, and when Chris was talking, uh, AJ heard him out, and it was a coming together of what really happened in that situation, and when I was watching this documentary, um, God said, "I want you um, to, to to. I want this week's 
sermon to be called Talk It Out because many people just get offended and they don't get the whole story. Something happens in relationships and they don't talk about it. They don't bother to get the whole story because resentment builds up and and then resentment builds up and all this misunderstanding kind of builds up. And sometimes uh, there were differences in their stories, but there were commonalities in their stories too. I remember uh, when they both talked about this guy who was in almost in both their bands and um, he he didn't fit with any any of them or Lou didn't like like him for the Backstreet Boys or in sync and they both AJ and Chris were talking about how the same guy got fired from each of their bands. And in AJ's case, in Backstreet Boys' case, AJ was talking about how Howie um, had to be the bad news to fire him. And in Chris's case, he had to had to be the bad news to fire him. So, uh, although it was Lou's idea, he didn't want to be the bad guy, so he he let somebody in the band take the fall for, to fire this, this guy. And it was the same, the same guy and and Chris said, oh, really? And, and AJ said, it all makes sense now. So when you kind of talk it out and air it out, you, you get to come to an understanding. You get to see each other's side. And I think that's the issue. The, la- the lack of conversation. Because conversation brings understanding, and understanding could bring healing. And I think that's what the world needs. In order to heal, we need to talk. Sometimes healing won't come from uh, the Lord, like, doing a miracle. Sometimes in emotional healing, you need to confront that situation. And to confront that situation, you need to be able to talk. You need to be able to talk to that person and be honest with that person. And the Lord said there are situations right now where people are not talking, they're just going about their business thinking that it doesn't matter, but it does. Any Anything you don't confront confronts you. Remember that. You can only keep things hidden for, for, for a, a limited time. It will catch up with you. Things in the dark will come to the light. Do you want it to be on on your terms? Or do you want it to just happen? Because when you don't confront things and deal with them and deep dive with them, they will still be there. No alcohol, no sexual partner, no money, no nothing, no no dream chasing, no any kind of chasing will stop your issues from being there. You need to know 
that you need to confront them and know that you're strong enough to deal with whatever issue you have to confront. And, and if it requires another person, if it requires a conversation with another person, remember, being combative is not the way to solve um, issues. You have to come at it at, at a, in a calm way and really hear the person to understand. Don't hear the person to respond. A lot of people hear, um, uh, hear people, but they hear people to respond. They don't hear to understand. And when you hear to understand, you can get a better picture or come to a solution. Many people don't come to a solution because they're afraid to confront the issue. Don't be afraid to confront the issue and muddy it up with problems. Okay. What... What do I mean by that? Let's say um, I have been in a wife, um, I'm married, and he never does the dishes, never picks up his clothes, and she's already, she's doing that. Never helps with the kids or whatever. Um, and he says, I, I'm working. I don't need to do anything like that. And she, she's always nagging him. Pick up your clothes. Do this. Do that. And they don't talk about the issue. They're just worried about picking up the, the laundry or whatever. But the issue, the deeper, the problem is picking up the laundry where where the issue is that she doesn't feel that you appreciate her. She doesn't feel that you appreciate that she um, that she um, does all this with no thanks, nothing. It's about appreciation. And the only way that he's going to know that is if you come together and talk about it. This stuff happens in relationships and with friendships. And a lot, a lot of people are afraid to confront things. Confronting things may be a little uncomfortable, um, but it will be better for you in the long run. And it's also how you confront things. I, I, um, I talked a bit about in, in a couple of previous sermons, the difference between, um, talking and communication. Talking to me is when words are just coming out of your mouth. Communication is um, where uh, you talk and things come out of your mouth, but they 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 have a me- communication is sending a clear message that the person can understand and receive like not just words coming in your mouth it's sending a a clear message that the person can receive so it's not just words coming in your mouth it's sending a clear message that the person can receive and after they receive it it's up to them to um to 
let that information go down and change the behavior. That's not up to you. All that you can do is say your part in a non-threatening way, in a non-blaming way, in a loving way, and oh, and then, and then let the person receive your message and do what they've got to do to um, make the changes, and. And a relationship goes two ways. So in any problem, you're not blameless and they're not and they're not blameless. So what part are you playing in the in this situation? And sometimes, because the only person we can control is ourselves, and the first thing you've got to ask is, what part am I playing in the downfall of this relationship? You cannot deal, like, you could only deal with you. You cannot control what happens with the other person. You cannot uh, control uh, the situation or what happens with the other person. You can only deal with you. And a lot of people are quick to blame other people, quick to uh, pass the buck on other people and not look look at them selves. You need to look at yourself first because a relationship takes multiple people. What are you contributing to this relationship or not non-relationship? Oh, how I long for conversation and not just comment. Comments are just talking with uh, on the computer or on the phone. Conversation is where a message is received and can be acted upon by the other person. That's the communicate. That's co- communication, and not just talking. We need to we need to start communicating and not just talking. And that's what I think they were doing by having that face to face conversation about what that guy did. They were able to to compare notes and bring healing and and think to that bring for con conversations bring clarity to a situation Com- communication brings clarity to a situation and i think if we learn how to communicate and we we learn that communication is for all parties that's when things will change. We don't communicate. We get upset and we we just expect people to understand what we mean. But people don't understand what you need unless you tell them. I know for me, sometimes it's very hard uh, for me to actually communicate what I need. I'm, I'm working on it, but it's it's a challenge. Um, it's really a challenge, and I, I'm finding out now how difficult communication is. And it's easy to say that communication is uh, to convey a message, but sometimes it's hard 
and I want people to understand who are not good at communication that it's a process and it's a process that we all have to work on. And it's a process that I'm working on. But communication brings clarity. Clarity brings actions. And actions bring healing. The correct actions bring healing. A lot of relationships are destroyed because of a lack of communication. They have a lot of talking but very little communication. Uh, Talking is just with words coming on your mouth. mouth. Um, And communication is intentionally conveying a message that is received by the other person. Communication for me is when, when a mess, when, when a message is conveyed intentionally and received by the other person. So that's communication. Communication has the intention to help and heal. Communication does not destroy. Slander destroys. But communication is really for healing. Slander and talking destroys. Um, A lot of people like to talk, but they don't communicate well. They don't convey the message as well. And I know for me, sometimes when things are hard to communicate, I need to pray, Lord, help me just say this right. And he does. It's just amazing how he can help us with communication. And some of us have an issue with not only communicating with people, but we have an issue with communicating with the Lord. We have an issue with prayer. Uh, And that's the first part of communication that we need to work on. Like I said, communication is conveying a message received by the other person. Not only the other person, but it it is... um, conveying a message received by the Lord, too. Um, Because communication uh, requires uh, listening and and responding. Like, and it requires both things. Like, so, if if, um, your friend is talking and you're not listening. You can't hear hear the message that they're trying to convey. And if you are talking and your but your friend or family member or the person that you're trying to communicate with is not listening, um, it doesn't. They they can't receive the message that you're trying to convey. We we need to, um, some of us need to talk more. Some of us need to listen more. And the Lord will help us with communication because we're all different and he knows our needs and our personalities. Um... And there are different kinds of communication. There is non-verbal communication. And there is verbal communication. Uh, Verbal communication is just uh, communication that comes in your mouth. Non-verbal communication is any 
thing that that uses your your hands or uh, your body, which is not your mouth. And sometimes interpretation is required for nonverbal communication. Most times, what's missing in nonverbal communication is the interpretation. Uh, so, so, oh, I could be folding my arms, and you could be could be talking to me and thinking that I'm upset because I'm folding my arms. But it could be that I'm just my arms are tired and this is a way that I'm most comfortable. Or that's a stupid example, but um, something like that. So don't let not um, a person's verbal cues put you off of communicating with them. Um, the, the the first thing in in communication, whether verbal or nonverbal, is honesty. A lot of times we're afraid to be honest. Uh, we're afraid to say, you know what? Uh, I I don't mean to be falling asleep. It's not you, but I'm just having a horrible. Uh, I had a horrible night last night. And sometimes we just misread communication uh, cues and it just is a big mess. We need to get better at communication. Like, um, intentionally conveying a message which people can receive and respond to. And I think if we were to communicate better, I think the whole world will be better, like, and, and understanding we're all different too, and understanding that we all respond differently, that we all are different, and that's okay to be different. And understanding that we all We all communicate differently. And and getting to know that person's style of communication and asking clarifying questions. A key that a pastor said to me um, one time, he said, um, when somebody asked me something and then response to it, I respond back with the question, did you mean this? And the person could say, yes, I meant that, or they could say, no, I actually meant this. We need to get better at communication because that's the way the world runs. We need to get better at con- at intentionally conveying message messages that can re- be received and acting and acted upon not just talking talking is just saying words and communication is intentionally conveying messages that can be acted upon and received by another person Communication breaks down relationships and misunderstanding happens because of a lack of communication. Um, Going back to the interview I saw with 
age with AJ and Chris, you could feel the understanding coming to, to both those guys and the healing coming from both those guys. Like um, Chris said, for years I was uh, under the impression of this. And AJ said, oh, um, and AJ said at another part of the interview, AJ said, I didn't know you went through that. That was really crappy. Now I understand. And you can just feel on this podcast just the healing and understanding uh, coming from uh, this conversation. And, and I wonder if healing would come to the world if we would just learn to communicate, if we would just learn to understand each other, if we would just learn to, to um, um, I, if we would just learn to sit down with people that are different from you and ju- not judge them, but to understand them. It's phenomenal. So guys, I will see you later. Take care. Bye. Let's get them something to talk about. Let's give them something to talk about. Let's give them something to talk about. How about love? Love, love. Let's give them something to talk about. Let's give them something to talk about. Let's give them something to talk about. How about love? Love, love.